here, I'm Sal. Um, thanks for checking out the video. Today I'm going to be trying to fix these horribly retracting seat belts. It's just... It's pretty bad. <laughs> so... I think it's a combination of the seat belt being very dirty. Um, well, I don't think it's a combination of anything. I think that's it. <laughs> I think the seat belt's very dirty. Um, some of you guys suggested actually to um, sand down this slit up here. Um, because you can see it's pushing against the, the top of the slit, and that's kind of what's preventing it from, um, you know, retracting easily. So, even if just sanding the slit would solve the problem, I don't know that that's the only thing that I want to do, because, I mean, they're, they're gross, they're, <laughs> they're super nasty, so, I like to clean them regardless. Um, so I was looking into a few different ways of cleaning them. One of you guys suggested um, pressure washing them, and I looked that up, and it looks like it would do wonders. <laughs> um, and I'm still debating on doing that. Um, I kind of go back and forth on whether I want to do it or not. Uh, it's, I think it's easy enough to take the seatbelt off, but I think I'm going to try and just clean it. My plan is to dunk it in the water, uh, a bucket of water with some Dawn dish up, and let it do its thing. Um, if that doesn't work, then uh, maybe I'll revert to pressure washing in the future. Hey there, Sal from the future here. I just wanted to kind of tell you what worked so you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. Um, but I'd say that cleaning the seatbelts is very important. You might be um, inclined to just sand down the top um, and it might make it better, but I mean, if you're going through the hassle of doing it, I would just also clean them. Um, they look a million times better. They're much less stiff, which I think helps with retracting. Um, but I don't think cleaning them alone would solve the issue if they're this far gone. So I also sand it up here. And then I would also recommend looking for other points of friction. So for me, on the passenger side, it was actually rubbing on the inside of this cover down here. Um, so I just cut it back with an X-Acto knife and now the passenger side retracts so easily. It's actually very impressive. So um, I gotta figure out this driver's side one a little bit more. It's not great. But, um, yeah, big steps in the right direction. Quickly, I'd like to thank Luis Ortega for suggesting doing the sanding and Joe for uh, suggesting using the pressure washer. Um, huge thanks for commenting on the videos and for the advice. Now let's go back to yesterday and run through the whole process. So I just went in the kitchen, actually, and used my little Extendi sink nozzle and filled it up with warm water. Um, I just think it'll do better at uh, getting into the pores, letting the soap do its thing if it's warm. So, let's see. Get this popped in here. So, a tip to um, keep your seatbelt all extended is just use like a little clamp. I looked, I thought I had clamps, I guess I don't. So, I'm just going to use these vice grips. They, do basically the same thing and you'll just clamp down and now it all just sits loosely you can see how nasty like oh my god I probably should do it before and after but look how nasty that is it's so gross I like to think that it's not all from me some of it's from the previous owners okay going in Okay, so while that's doing its thing in there, uh, I'm gonna focus my attention up here to the slit. So you can see how, I mean, it's not super tight, but you can imagine if the seatbelt itself is really stiff and not flexible, when it tries to come back in, it just gets caught up on the top side of this, and then uh, it, it just doesn't wanna retract. A lot more friction, so it's harder to retract. So what I did, I just went, <clears throat> cut some sandpaper, 120 grit. I'm just gonna slide it in and uh, just go back and forth a few times. So while the seatbelt is soaking, there's a few other things I wanted to do in here. 
Mainly just these plastics uh, are nasty. I never cleaned them when I got bought the truck. I did pretty good interior cleaning, um, but I never cleaned the plastics like this. And then also the handles. <laughs> I didn't actually realize how dirty the handles were until I recorded the video for the headlights. And I looked and I was watching the video back and I was like, oh my God, those the handles are freaking nasty. So I, um, I realized I need to clean them. So I'm thinking uh, my plan is to just use a uh, magic eraser. I freaking love these things. They work so well. So I'm gonna just dip it in the nice warm water and let it do its thing. See the before and after this swipe on the handle. So pretty white. Wow, magical. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, it cleaned it up a little bit. Nothing crazy. It didn't look horrible before, but this makes it look a little bit better. Let's see. A little bit better. Some of these black specks I just couldn't get out. And then this other one looks so much better. I don't even know if I did a before and after of that one. I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to give you a little update on the 240. Um, in case you don't know, this is my 92 Nissan 240SX. It's got an SR20 swap. That's a Japanese engine um, swapped into this car. And it's supposed to be my project car. <laughs> I know I put a lot of truck stuff on the channel, um, but my goal is to put some more 240 stuff on there as well. The reason why I haven't had much to put up is because I've just been acquiring parts to do the next big job that I want to do, which is a five lug conversion. So from the factory, these cars come with four lug hubs and pretty crappy brakes, <laughs> especially when you give it a little more powerful engine. Um, I wouldn't say it's dangerous, but it's not confidence inspiring. <laughs> so a uh, popular upgrade is to do a Z32 brake from the, I guess it's 90s um, 300ZX. So when you do that, a lot of people will also do a five lug conversion because it opens you up to a bunch more wheels, uh, a lot more popular wheels, better offsets, um, better sizes. So um, that's something I wanted to do as well. So, like I said, it sounds like, well, I think I said it before, where you're like, oh, five lug swap, like not a big deal. And then you start adding up, okay, well, so I get the hubs, not that bad, a couple hundred bucks. Okay, then I gotta get um, new brakes, I wanna do that, a couple more hundred bucks. And then, oh, I need new rotors too, you know, another couple hundred bucks. And then, uh, okay, brake lines, another 50 bucks. Oh crap, I need all new wheels and tires too. <laughs> Another 1500 bucks or two grand or however much you want to spend on wheels and tires. I mean, it's almost limitless. So it adds up quickly. So I'm trying to spread it out over uh, you know, a bunch of months. But what came in the mail today, very exciting, are the actual five lug hubs um, for the swap. So let's see here. Ugh. You can see just five lugs, bolts right up to the factory uh, stuff. And I am so excited to get these on. Um, I'm planning to run RPF ones. I know it's a very popular wheel. Um, people are encouraged to mix it up a little bit, <laughs> do something different, but I don't care. I think they look so good on uh, on these cars and I mean, I'm, I'm going for it, <laughs> whatever anyone says. So I just got these lugs and the hubs in the mail. Um, I've had these, but worth showing again because they're uh, they're beautiful. These Part Shop Max Z32 calipers. Um, so you can buy remanufactured calipers at O'Reilly's, AutoZone, whatever. Um, sometimes they'll even say Nissan on them. A lot of times they'll grind it off or whatever. But these are a brand new 
caliper that they use the OEM moldings for. So this is an aluminum caliper, doesn't weigh much at all. Um, and it uses the OEM moldings, but it's a brand new thing, which is kind of cool because the OEM ones are long discontinued. So, um, plus I think the gold looks kind of cool. It'll look nice behind some RPF ones. And then so I got those uh, probably about a month ago now, month and a half. And then I more recently got these rotors. Um, I decided to go with these clean face ones from Brembo. Uh, popular upgrade is to do um, drilled and slotted rotors. Um, I think that looks really nice on a race car, but I think on a street car, uh, just having that clean face of the rotor looks, in my opinion, a lot better. So, um, yeah, all I got left are brake lines, which uh, are like 50 bucks, I'll order them all pretty soon, and then the wheels and tires. So, it's a huge expense, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna keep trying to spread it out over a couple months, and before you know it, we'll be doing a five look swap on this thing. I got other little things I want to figure out um, long before I do the five lug swap. But, yep, there will be more of this on the channel, but let's get back to truck stuff. Okay, so the seatbelts have been soaking for about an hour, and uh, the water's still very warm, which I'm impressed by. But I think I'm going to try and supplement it with some scrubbing. I got this really stiff nastiness of rush, um, but I'm just going to try and agitate it a little bit more. Try not to have it fly everywhere. So I'm just going to go through and try to wipe it down with a rag here. It's taking off some stuff. I definitely should have gotten this on camera, but <laughs> it did not look like that beforehand. It was like a nice bright blue. Now it's this nasty puke green. So it did something that, uh, that makes me feel a little bit better. Okay, so like I said, on this side, I'm gonna try and pressure wash it. Uh, hopefully you can see this side is nasty. I thought the other side was bad. This side's really bad. Look, it really doesn't want to retract. So I think it's a good candidate for the pressure washing. And um, yeah, so there's a bolt under this cover here that you take off with just a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, under here, you pull up the carpet, and there's a 14 millimeter bolt. And then uh, there's one more up here. So let's uh, let's start taking this stuff apart. It's getting kind of late, um, getting kind of dark, sorry about that, but this is the passenger seatbelt. I was able to get it out. Um, I'm going to pressure wash it really quick, 
and then get it back in the car so we can drive. I mean, holy crap. This is a difference of, it was kind of folded here. So it um, pressure washed the top and not the bottom. And I mean, look at the difference. That's crazy. Also, this is like super yellow. Hopefully you could see the difference as I was moving down. Okay, well, as with all of my car endeavors, I start them late and then they end at nighttime. So I am so happy with the pressure washing of the passenger one. I'm anxious to see how it turns out in the morning after it dries. I said I was gonna put it back in the truck, but I'm gonna let it dry out here. Um, yeah, that was, it was very satisfying. Hopefully it showed in the, the video of how satisfying it was. I wish I did it when it was lighter out, but I guess it'll be a good comparison of the one I did uh, soaked in the water to the one I did with pressure washing. Uh, I guess we'll see how they stack up to each other, but they're both drying overnight and I will give you an update in the morning. Okay, hey, it's the next morning and um, this is the pressure wash side. I reinstalled it and check this out. Much better, but it wasn't like that <laughs> right when I installed it. So I did it and it really didn't change at all. I was like, what the heck? I was really bummed. And then I started looking. I'm like, okay, there's gotta be friction somewhere. Cause if I pull this up, it retracts really easily. So there's gotta be friction somewhere. I looked up here, it wasn't rubbing at all uh, while it was retracting. So I was like, okay, not that. And I was looking down here and it's actually rubbing on the back side of this little cover. So I was like, hey, that's weird. And sure enough, if I pulled it out and it wasn't retracting, if I just lifted it like this, it would want to retract super easily. So I just came in with a Dremel, would not recommend it. A little sketchy being so close to the seatbelt itself. But then later I did it with an X-Acto knife. The plastic's really soft and I was able to just cut it back. And now it's significantly better. Look at that, so much better. <laughs> I'm, I'm super pumped. I went to the other side to try and cut um, some of the plastic back over there and there's nothing to cut back. It's like right in the middle of the slot like it's supposed to be. So I don't know uh, how to make that any better. So I may end up pressure washing the other side. Um, I'm not really sure. So you can see over on this side, um, it's not perfect. It is a little bit better. Um, but like I said, there's no friction on this side. So I might sand down this top a little bit more. Hopefully that helps. But overall, I'm glad that I did this. I'm glad I cleaned them up. They look a lot better. They feel a lot better. They're not as stiff as they were. And they do retract better. I'm super pumped about the passenger side one. Um, but yeah, my advice would be look for any points of friction. If you see it rubbing up here, sand down up there. If you see it rubbing down here, you know, cut it away down there. Um, and then it can always help to just clean them. The more flexible this thing is, the easier it's gonna slide through the system. So, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.